All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in for today's Friday hack and play. Um, so I wasn't sure what to do today. There's a handful of different things I could work on, um, but Gabe provided a pretty fun idea. Um, so there's the idea to take some of the classes in Drupal core and mark them as final and private, which is a pretty controversial topic actually in open source. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with what that means in object oriented code, you can say that a class is final which means that nobody can extend it or override it, if you will. And you can also mark some function, some of its methods or properties as private, which means that even though it's extensible, those things can't be used by like a child class, which some people think it is inappropriate and open source because it limits the amount of customization and flexibility, but maintainers like it because it allows you to own your code and not worry about backwards compatibility whenever you make a change. Um, there's a whole issue about it um, on drupal.org, which if you read, um, they've held off from using final because it limits extensibility and a key feature is extensibility. So the workaround was to tag things as internal. Well, you tag something as internal, that doesn't stop somebody from extending it so there's been several issues where things have broken. Um, I haven't opened the look at these yes, yet, but we'll see like what one of these are with menu block. Oh, dependency injection issue. Basically, whenever a constructor changes, that's probably the biggest um, dependency injection breakage is whenever a constructor is modified, then everything breaks. And that really slows down the amount of work that can be done in the upstream inside Drupal core if Drupal can't innovate because it's worried about breaking contrib modules, then we're kind of stuck and having to do all these like uh, patchy things for every major release. So these things are actually deprecated in the B or not deprecated. They're documented in the backwards compatibility policy. Um, let's look for internal API definition on this page at internal. Um, anything that's flagged, this should be treated as internal. But guess what? No one does it. Um, and these are things that are considered to be internal. Database schema, HTTP headers, automated test classes. This is actually one that's really interesting. It are controller and form classes, which everybody extends form classes. Um, that's kind of like, that's like a, everybody customizes those. I know I extend them over all the time. Um, Controllers are not part of the API of a module unless specifically marked with an API tag. So the idea is to stop relying on API tags or internal flags and actually mark them as final or private methods. Um, plugins, basically anything that's not explicitly considered part of the public API. Um, there's various things in here that are documented, but I've never even read this. This is the first time I've read it. Um, you know, we're all kind of used to using the underscore prefix of, oh, well, if it's got an underscore in front of it, that means it's meant to be internal. That's actually carried over in a lot of languages. I know JavaScript, even in Go, Go actually handles functions with an underscore as private, um, if I'm remembering right. So it's actually built into the language, not so much in PHP. And if you are curious, I'll go ahead and link this into the chat if you want to read up on it at all. Um, but the first comments, as you can assume, are like, hey, this is going to cause a lot of problems. And should we really be naming things final? Doesn't that go against the spirit of extensibility and open source? Um, so that's where this conversation goes. And it's about easy, making it easier for a core maintainer or a maintainer of a module to customize, to keep building. Otherwise it is, um, you know, they have to keep doing this like patchwork. Sop, aren't you supposed to be working? Or are you slacking off at work? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm not so much going to worry about this issue but what I'm going to do is write a static code analysis that finds the things that we could mark final or private. So we're, we're going to use the, oh, that's right. You start early and get off early. 
So we're going to write this, we're going to leverage the PHP parser, which will take code into an abstract syntax tree. Um, if you've watched any of my work with Drupal Rector or PHP stand, this is when we take written PHP code, transform it into objects, and then do magical things with them. So that's what we're going to be doing today to see if we can, if I lost Notion, um, find classes that are never extended and classes that the classes that do not have an interface. So in object oriented programming, an interface is like the contract. And if a class doesn't implement an interface, it's never meant to be swapped out. Like that is the concrete implementation and there is no alternative. And technically if a class has no interface, that means it should always be final. If it implements an interface, I still believe it should be final, but maybe we'll let it be extended. Um, in all of my personal work and client work, I use final and private. This has caused some controversy actually, even in project code. But the way I've liked it is if another developer tries to take my class, extend it, customize it, whatever, and they realize they can't because it's final or private, they have to talk to me. We have to have a discussion and we come up with architecture decisions. Without it, you just get things that are made done and you end up with a hot piling mess. Um, which I think we can agree has been part of the struggle with the Drupal 7 or the Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 upgrade is we didn't actually mark things final or private or have clear expectations of what's a public or private API. So as things change fast, things break in other packages because they thought something was stable, but actually it's not. Fun times. So that's what I'm going to see if we can work on. If we can create a script to find these things mark them as internal or deprecated for Drupal 10 and start to clean up Drupal's act in the object oriented workspace. Um, if you look at other projects, they do this as well. Drupal's just been known not to. So I'm gonna get started with this. Let's go ahead into my Drupal directory. If I could type. So I'm gonna make a new project let's do uh drupal static fun oops cd drupal static fun if i could type um this is a new project so i'm gonna do composer init call it we're gonna just gonna call it that for right now um i'm gonna skip through this is a project it's not a library we're going to add maybe it will be later on um, define my dependencies. Sure. Um, I know I need this library, which there's the name for it. I'll copy. I'm going to paste that into here. Um, according to um, the maintainer of PHP stand, we shouldn't need PHP stand to do this. We can accomplish it all with this one library. So let's see what happens. Um, so that's the only dependency I know of that we'll need off the bat. So dev dependencies, yes, I wanna add Drupal core as a development dependency and Drupal core dev. Um, we'll generate that, install the dependencies. So this way we'll have the Drupal core code available to run against to find out um, what we can and can't possibly mark final or private. All right, and then I want to open this in PHP Storm. So I've done stuff kind of like this before, um, not so much. Like I tried to write my own um, analysis tool before, then I found PHP Stand, which was a lot easier than writing my own. So we'll see how well this goes and if I lose my mind or not, because it's highly likely to happen. Um, all right, so we have our composer.json, which is the manifest for our project. And we can see inside of vendor, we have Drupal and we have Drupal core in here. So for all of our testing and static analysis, we can just start pointing at this folder. Um, I guess the best way to get started is just create a file. types one it's taking a minute because it's indexing um, one thing i'll do too for require i want to require 
PHP 8.0. So I believe that is what I have running right now. Great. And since Drupal 8 doesn't run on PHP 8, Drupal 9 does. So it's fine to have this. Oh, I'm not on it right now. Brew unlink. So this code's going to run against Drupal 9 anyways. Um, so let's use PHP 8 to get some of the fancy goodness in the language. So wait for that to unlink this to actually, I should pause indexing while that runs. Um, every time I switch from PHP seven to PHP eight, I have to fix the interpreter. There we go. Now it's recognized it. Click okay. Play this again. Oh, it's going to take forever to index because I have Drupal core. All right. Well, while that runs, um, we'll set up this initial test file, which we know we need to have a require directory vendor auto load. And let's take, while this is running and in indexing, I'm gonna try to set it off to the side so I can see it. Let's read the docs. Um, so you require it, you've got some code and you create a parser. Um, prefer PHP 7, which there is pre so you can actually parse PHP 7. Does this run off Windows? Yes, you can do this in Windows. I have no idea how. Um, there's people who are developers with Windows and they somehow do this, but I don't have the faintest idea how they accomplish it because they you need like in the terminal, um, you end up you so with Mac and Linux, you have um, like a the Unix shell. This is Apple based, but Apple is built on Unix. So if you use Linux and Mac, you're okay. With Windows, you have DOS and you have PowerShell, which is completely different. So you can do it. I don't know how, but there's there's lots of tips on the internet on how to do that. Or if you have newer Windows, there's the Windows, oh, what is it? Windows Linux subshell. So Andy, you might be able to do, um, if you want to mess around. So Windows has its own command console, but there is also the Linux bash shell on Windows 10. And that could make it easier because if you go on the internet, everything's going to be how to do it on, you know, like a Unix system like Mac OS or Linux. And then you're going to get to Windows and go, what is this? And I don't even know because I haven't had a Windows machine since... 2005 and from then it was always Linux until I got my Apple computers. Um, so there could be ways, there could be ways, but I know this WSL is the windows subshell or whatever subsystem. Oh, windows subsystem for Linux. This is how I know a lot of people work is they have a windows machine and then they use the windows subsystem for Linux to be able to do developer stuff. Um, you can do developer stuff with Windows, but you've got to do all these other little things that I don't even know um, how you run. But Windows, you can install PHP and do. you could probably do all of this stuff with Windows without needing, um, needing like the command line. You could do Composer and all that. PHP Storm, I know, runs with it. Um, so does VS Code. So you could get up and running with Windows. I'm sure there's a YouTube video. Like I said, I don't know it though. Um, so one thing, so now, so yeah, Windows does have its own command console, but it's for based on DOS, whereas Mac OS is a Unix based and then Linux is Linux. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just start here. We're gonna take this basic example of visiting a file and parsing it. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna copy this code verbatim. Uh, let's see, this is arguing because I didn't import. So we'll click the little light bulb, import class. So we can prefer different versions. So even though we're on PHP 8, it can actually parse it as PHP 7 or PHP 5 code. I believe PHP 7 will also read PHP 8 traits as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and 
let's just do copy the try catch because remember try catch is always fine to do so we need to parse some code let's take um so code is going to equal file get contents directory let's go straight into the vendor directory and so vendor Drupal core lib blah 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 um why can't I find things in here? Oh, that's why. Um, let's do Drupal. So let's even let's like look in here for something to be a candidate. Like this isn't final. Like why? No idea. This should be final. So let's just start with this even. Um, so lib drupal.php. You know, like this class should be final. For everybody who does not know what this class is, you reference it as like a shortcut. So like no one should be extending this um, at all. And all the methods should be public and all of the properties should be private. Like this is like a no brainer of a class. Um, so we'll go ahead and see what we can do um, by parsing this. So supposedly we'll be able to find out what extends this I, although I don't think we can, and that's where I feel like we need to have, um, that's where I feel like we need to be able to get PHP stan involved or rewrite some of what PHP stan has for traversing nodes. But I want to take this like a step at a time because I'm going out of my comfort zone here real quick. So let's just do a, um, we're going to pop a breakpoint. Let's right click on this. We'll do run. Why don't I see run in here? We've got all that figured out. That's running, the runtime set up. Um, there should be an option to run this file. Reformat code, open in. Why can't I run it? So we'll just go click this configuration. Um, so with this configuration runner, we can do run PHP script. Usually you can like click on a PHP script and it will load up right away. Um, so I'm going to copy the path, copy the absolute path. Search for PHP script, paste the file, specify the interpreter. I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to click on the little green bug because that's the debugger. All right, so we've got our debugger running and attached. So we can see here the code is the full contents of the file. If we step through, it crashed. Um, all right, that's not expected. So let's do, let's step through again. I'm going to step into it. So we have our code, error handler. So first statements is no, first statements are, so it's already parsed, but why? So if the first error is equal to no, we step over. Um, one trick that I, probably because I don't have a breakpoint at the end here. So one of my tricks is I always add stop equals no because you can't stop on a on an empty line. You have to have some kind of code to stop on. So this is my little trick. All right, so here we go. So we've got the abstract syntax tree. Um, so we're able to see that it uses various statements. Um, so we can see in the parts it uses Drupal core dependency injection, not initialize exception. We could use this to go find that class actually. Um, so let's step through what's going on here. So we have all the attributes. So this is the class name implements zero. So it doesn't implement anything. So that's where we could say, oh yeah, this should be implemented. Like this doesn't implement anything and extends nothing. We should mark it as final. But the hard part is finding things that extend this. Um, and that's where I do feel like PHP stand would be helpful in this. So I want to, so let's look at some of the documentation. 
I'm going to open a few of these. We don't want to pretty print fluent builders for AST nodes. We don't care about the lexer. The lexer is what helps read it. Um, error handling. We can evaluate some of the constants, not so much, um, and then performance. So let's look at walking through the AST. So we can create a node traverser. So let's see, traverse statements. So use parser. And the following code changes literal strings in AST to strings. So, all right, let's see here. So traverser statements equals blah. Um, I'm pretty sure that these are all statements. So let's let's take this to the next step. We've parsed. Um, let's just even copy. Copy and pasting as your friend. Import this here. Let's copy this use statement so it stops getting super cranky. And we'll pop the parser into here. All right, so we've got all of our uses there. Um, so let's just return. So if leave node, so if it's not null, I'm pretty sure in here. So let's look at the interface abstract. So just so you know, in reading this is we're actually creating a new anonymous class that extends the abstract um, class, which implements the full interface. It's just here for anybody to extend. So leave node is null and that's okay because if null, it won't replace the value. So if you've also seen me do work with Drupal Rector, this is how it replaces code. So it analyzes a file, rewrites the code and puts it back programmatically. Um, so we're building code to write code. Um, and that instance is to fix uh, deprecated code. So we're just gonna do a stop equals null here to see where we end up inside the traverser. And that's where we do, so this is, so a a traverser allows you to modify. A common way to work with AST is to use a traverser and one or more node visitors. The following changes all that. We don't really want to modify, but maybe this is easier just to go through and walk through everything. So let's do traverser walk, or sorry, it's traverse, and we'll do the AST. So let's go ahead and click debug again. So this is on leave node. Node is the name where it's, this is the use statement. So this node visitor abstract, if we hit play, we're now, oh, now we're inside the use. So let's hit stop because I'm confused what we, let's do, um, Command N to override some methods. So let's copy this. I want to see what goes on. So we don't want to, we don't really need to do before and after. We just want to go into the enter node. So again, the node is all of the, the tree, the, the nested file, the nested statements that are represent the actual file here. So when we say the use statement, it's these two lines. And then we'll see one where it represents the, the um, class line. And then we'll have all the constants as lines. And then when we can get down to a function, all these lines in here will be represented as objects. So if we go in, we'll see the node is a use statement. So here we go. Use statement use, here's the node name, the parts. This is representing this first line right here. And again, okay, so on leave node was at the tail end of this. So if I read that right, so the most common way to work with a node traverser, each node implements an interface before and after called before it's fully gone. 
Enter node is called when a node is first encountered before its children are processed. Then leave node is called after all the children have been processed. Okay. So that makes sense. Number of ways that AST can be modified from inside a node visitor is to change properties inside of the visitor on leave node. Um, doing this is supported both enter and leave node. However, you have to be mindful about where you perform the replacement. If a node is replaced on enter node, then recursive traversal will also consider all the children on the new node. So I've had this happen on my own. So you always wanna work on leave node. And here's where we can check things like if we should remove it or not. An AST can easily contain thousands of nodes and traverse and all of them may be slow, especially if one or more than one vis visitor. Um, if you're looking for all class declarations in a file, you know that once you've seen a class declaration, there's no point in checking all of its child nodes because PHP does not allow nesting classes. Oh, interesting. So we could do a, so what if we do, so if we did classes equals this empty array, we could then do, um, this on enter node, we could do use, we could pass it by reference with the ampersand classes. Or, oh no, we can't. So wait, maybe. Shoot. So we're using an anonymous class walker so what we could do add visitor is a new class new class extends php anonymous anonymous classes use external variable i have no idea if you can do this or not there we go anonymous classes outer new class outer oh duh you would pass it as a constructor which doesn't allow you to, oh, because we wouldn't do it there. We would go into here and we would pass it with reference. Um, so this, so that wouldn't work. I have no idea if this is the best way to do it or not. What we can do is then copy this. Oh, you've never seen it. So I've only seen it a handful of times. Um, I've used them sparingly. I end up using it for like a prototype and then end up creating a new class. So missing types declaration. I cannot speak. Um, that's right. So you can't specify that's passed by reference there. So we'll see. I have no idea if this will work or not. Story of everything. Um, so stop equals null. So we'll stop here. Um, let's do the debug. So this class is node. So we have this, this is our class. That's the class there globals. It should be classes great it passed by reference so it actually modified the global variable so we could go through here and now we have known classes so what we could do here's another step all right so we're slowly building up a traverser so let's create um let's create a class no extends traverser so we're going to create the, our new class called no extends traverser. We're going to extend this. Um, we'll have private array classes. 
because we can't so in php we are starting to get typed properties but you can't have it be a typed um so we couldn't say this is um node so we can't do this yet so we can't do something like that we can say it's an array and then in our comment documentation we can say var node statement something like then we can actually explain it there which i'm curious oh it is just node so we'll say that it's all they're all statements is what we can do So we can do something like that if we wanted to. And we'll make a public function, get classes, which returns an array. I feel like I thought in PHP 8, we made a way to like simplify these kind of like in Ruby, but I don't remember them. Um, so let's see private array classes is only read but never written. So we want to copy this enter node. Um, set null, so we'll go do this. So as soon as we hit a class statement, we want to exit, but to do only log if there is no, ex if the class does not extend another class. So what we're going to do is go through the um, the abstract syntax tree. And we're going to find classes that don't extend other classes because if they don't, that could be a, it could either be a, oh, no extends. So actually not, um, we should change this because it's not just no extends. We want to find things that no extends or abstract. So we want things that are not abstract classes and do not extend other classes. That's a good sign that something is concrete because it's not extending something else and it's not abstract, meaning that it should be extended by other classes. So that's what I'm kind of feeling would be the next step here. Um, let's delete that. So we have traverser. It's not just new node traverser. Oh, so we have, um, let's do visitor equals new no extends or extends or abstract um and let's add the visitor here so we've got our new we took the anonymous class we put it into a more concrete one and say visitor get classes um yeah well actually hold on i want to not do that let's go back and do this part again where we pass in classes as a constructor and we pass it by reference because eventually we can make this be like a static hash that gets passed around like as a um a class or what is it object array instead of having to do this by method we could do like a um we have array objects now allows objects to work as arrays no what am i thinking of um an spl recursive iterator iterator filter iterator ooh caching iterator i didn't know that this is a thing when was this added doesn't say um but i know we have some array iterator array object i don't want array access countable i don't know i'm going up down the rabbit hole there so let's get back to the task at hand instead of being distracted so we have our classes we don't need get classes we have this classes equals classes so then when we get to the end here, that will be modified by reference. And when I say by reference, it's using the ampersand is saying, hey, don't allocate new memory for this. Use the same pointer. I think that's the right term, pointer. 
use the same reference. I never wrote in C or any like higher or lower level language. So my terminology is bad. I started to finally learn it by working with Golang. Um, so let's just see if I got this right. Nope, that still didn't copy it over. So I probably need to do it here as well. Um, let's do the debugger. All right, there we go. So we're getting the class in place. Um, so now I only want to do it if it doesn't extend another class and it's not abstract. So let's, I'm going to bring my breakpoint up. So let's look at the node and extends is null. So let's see here. So we can say if class, oh, if node extends equals to null. Um, flags, I wonder how you know if something's abstract. Oh, here we go. Constant abstract. And we also want to skip things that are private, that are already private too. Um, so why don't we start there? So I'm assuming it's on the flags, attributes, comments. Oh yeah, we can actually see the entire comment as well that gets picked up. Um, part of my work with PHP stand was making it so that way we could parse these. Um, we could parse out deprecation notices for from this statement here. So there is a project that takes this comment, finds if it's been flagged as deprecated, and then throws an error but it wouldn't abstract out the text after that tag. So that is something that I helped contribute to PHP stand last year or so. Um, so let's try to look at these flags, modifier public. I'm gonna do find usages. So dump flags, builder, class constant, this flags make public. So that allows us to modify it. So builders add modifier. So I'm guessing we just do, let's see if there's a node has at flags. I actually don't know the best way to work with this. Um, it's probably one of those crazy ones where it's like, it has, let's see, standard, no. Um, That's not. Oh, is abstract. Oh, here we go. Wow. Um, there's actually these helper methods. So is ab. If I would have looked. So let's do this. So if node statement. So if this is a class. Um, then we can do actually what I think would be a little bit cleaner to write is, let's stop the debugger. Let's copy this. I really hate um, having extreme nesting. So if node is not instance of, because then it just starts to look like, you know, Goku making a fireball or whatever is the thing from like even Street Fighter, whatever the meme is. Um, I like to have exit return. So as soon as I have logic that's out the window, return. So in this case, if it's in this case, if it's not a class, bail out. Um, so if the node is abstract, we can bail out. Um, so actually we can do if it's abstract or the node is anonymous. Um, if it's anonymous, which I thought this would say, of course this option is only available in enter node because it's too late for leave node. If you're looking for all classes in a file and assuming you're not interested in anonymous classes. So I'm curious how anonymous, oh, so if the null name is null. Interesting, I thought it would have been another identifier. Um, so if it's abstract or anonymous or node is final, we wanna return null. And then finally, um, if node extends is not equal to null, return null or return null. So if it's not a class, if it's 
Um, if it's abstract, anonymous, or final, we bail out. If it does, if it extends something, we bail out. And finally, we only log it if it's available. Um, so we'll see, we have classes here. So now the next step is to verify this. So right, we, we're running on this class here. It's pretty obvious. Let's see about, um, let's go to core. Ah, I don't know. Um, what's something that gets extended? So we have access aware router that doesn't, um, that's the interface like this class here, private should just be private. Nobody should ex be extending that. We got BC route extends route. That's not in our package. All this should be all this Gabe. I hope you're thinking the same thing as I'm just like, what the heck Just all of it. Like this should be final. Well, what the fuck? Where am I going to? Sorry. Um, so private stream wrapper extends local stream. Okay, great. Let's, let's take this file. Um, copy, wait, copy reference. No. Um, local stream. Let's copy the path. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, I guess welcome to the insanity of having to maintain PHP stand Drupal and Drupal and help contribute to Drupal Rector. Um, it's fun. So let's modify the code. Eventually we'll want to be able to gather all of the files dynamically. Um, yep. You can drag and drop break, break points, break points. Um, I'll show another neat thing that maybe you don't know. Let's see what happens when I paste. Okay, so we're at that file now. Um, so one thing you can do, so if anybody hasn't used PHP Storm and some of the advanced things, you know, of course you could do, you know, like, um, we only wanna do a breakpoint if classes not empty. It's funny, it flagged using the word pleb. Um, so you can suspend, you could choose to, oh, you can choose to suspend execution. Um, so one, you can turn it off. You can disable it if you want to. You can choose ex to suspend um, condition. You can log it. You can log the stack trace once this is hit. Um, you can remove after it's been hit before any other breakpoints. If we go to more. Um, okay, so that extends up here. Usually what I'll do is this stop. I'll put a breakpoint here. Um, and then let's say I don't want a condition, but I don't want this to run until something else was hit. So I'll right click more, um, and then condition, oh, wait, no, where is it? Oh, disable until hitting the following breakpoint here. So this breakpoint will only run if we hit this breakpoint here. Um, so I do things like that a lot, which is helpful if you're dealing with anything that's recursive. So you're going through a lot of steps, but you, you keep hitting the same breakpoint, but it doesn't really matter until you've hit a different one. So you can set up this conditional trigger. Um, so like if I hit stop and play, um, the code's supposedly working, which I need to get PHP unit in here because this is gonna drive me nuts if I don't have my test. But this breakpoint didn't hit, so neither did this one. Um, so let's go ahead and just break one here. So node, we got, oh, not there. Let's drag it over. So right here, we know the class is abstract because um, it has the various flags. Um, you can see that it implements a class or interface. So because we don't hit this breakpoint, we never hit the second one. Um, so that's a really useful feature when you're doing advanced debugging. So let's start to organize our code a little bit more. And to do that, we're going to, what is this saying? What is this arguing about me? I'm not gonna add the security package. Um, so let's create our autoload directories. So autoload, we'll do PSR4. 
with how it's auto um, auto completing because it's matching off of the composer schema if you use vs code like many do because you don't pay for php storm it does the same thing um so in this case we're going to make this be called mglamen um i really hate my username as part of the namespace it feels weird so let's just call it um whatever here static drupal fun time i don't know naming things is hard call it the we'll just make this be the drupal static fun package um there's very hard things in software development and they are cache and validation and naming things so if you're good at naming things and figuring out when something should be killed or not you could be a software developer um, so right here, I was able to define my auto loading. If you're not familiar with PSR4, um, PSR stands for PHP standards recommendation. So the PHP fig is the um, something group. So PSR, where's the definition? Oh, P PHP standards recommendation. That's what PSR stands for is this. Um, PSR4 is just an auto loading standard, which means that given files are located with a certain namespace, they can be magically loaded. So what I'm going to be doing is if I do a new file, actually I think I do new PHP class, I could call the class, um, you know, if I say, what do we have visitor? Um, what did I call it? No extends or abstract horrible name, but whatever. So we could call it visitor slash there. So this is going to be the class name, the file name, template class, not a valid class name. So let's do a new directory. First, we'll call it visitors and not minimize control M over control N. So PHP class, we're going to call this our name. It's going to generate the namespace. We click OK. So with our PSR4, the composer auto load, auto loader knows that when it sees Drupal static fun, it's this source directory. It sees visitors. It's that folder. And the class name matches the file name. So whenever it runs into our class name, it knows to load this. Um, we will also make it a final class and just copy the second half. And copy a bunch of this use statements, which I never remember if the use go above or below the namespace. Just put it there. Um, let's see, what does this want? So what is this supposed to return actually? Now that we have, ooh, now that we're using PHP 8, we can actually have native union returns. Um, so that's one of the cool features with PHP 7 and below, you had to rely on your document blocks to do that. But now we can actually say that our return type has these different unions, which means an or. Um, so that's super cool that we can have that be typed. I know some people don't like things being strictly typed, I do. Um, so what we should have here is a, um, like what we need to have next is a new class called class collector, which we can make final. And this will have a um, private array of classes and we'll do a public function add class, which we receive a class statement. Class, and we'll do use PHP parser. Notes, we'll import a partial namespace and this is a void operation where we then do this classes this class um, to do make sure we don't duplicate somehow we can 
Do that, and then we can add a PHP storm. Can actually just do a getter, and it can generate that for us. So if you did not know that, you can do that. We could have probably done the same thing for add class. Um, and let's copy. Let's actually annotate that here. It's not just an array, it's an array of those. So why did I create the node collector or that collector? So we can do private class collector. So instead of passing around this random um, array, we can actually now do collector is collector and collector equals collector. So much boilerplate. Um, then we'll take this node and we'll do this collector add class and we'll pass in the node. So what we can do is delete this class, delete these files, let's call collector equals new class collector. In our namespace, the visitor is let's import, we'll pass the collector, and we can say classes equals collector get classes. So if we were to debug this, it's going to fail because I need to run. Um, I need to update the auto loader because so whenever you run composer update, oh, show them all, what non empty PSR prefix must. Oh, whoops. That cryptic message means that. Um, so inside composer, it generates all these auto load files. And if we look at here, so it has an array. And it just maps all of the namespaces to the proper folder based off PSR4 standards. So that's all that. That's what that means when I say I need to regenerate the autoloader. So let's go click update. Which apparently PSR cache. Oh, PSR cache was updated because now I have um, PHP 8 as a dependency. So PHP, PSR cache one probably only worked with PHP seven. Now we have PHP eight, we got 3.0. But the only difference that matters is I can, what? Run this, but apparently not. Um, composer dump. Composer dump autoload, generating autoload files. Why is this being a jerk? So yeah, so right here, Drupal static fun, class collector. Well, come on now. What am I doing wrong? How am I screwing this up? Um, See, I can really ruin things too. Um, namespace, Drupal static fun, the class collector. Missing the source folder. I got the source folder right here. So the source folder's right here. Source, class collector, PHP. Uh, and the error is not in the path. I was saying the uncaught, not found in well, it's saying it's not found in here. Like it can't discover this class. So what we'll do, xdebug, we're gonna stump, jump into this. So if is set loaded, array object, maybe that's what I need to use for that other thing. But that's um, something else, so segments. So we're gonna step through what the auto loader looks like. Um, because Drupal core uses the Lamanus framework, we are also in that auto loader right now. So segments, we have Drupal static fun and class loader. Um, this now bumped into the composer one. All right, so let's look into find file. It's not in the class map and we don't have an authoritative class map. So this 
Do I have APCU running? Nope. So that's not it. Find file with extension. The class is there. So logical path replaces part of the directory separators. Um, so this is the logical path PS. Oh, wait a second. Is it not mapping to my source directory? PSR zero. All right. Um, I did something stupid. So let's go to um, I did something dumb. I don't know what I did wrong. That's what I did wrong. When I wrote it, I put two slashes at the beginning instead of at the front. So that did it. Um, when you define the PSR for it, there should just be the name and trailing double slashes, not the preceding. So that's where I screwed up. Um, Redump the autoloader. I run this now. We're good to go. So I was able to find the file. Um, so if I hit play, we crashed. Type property class must not be accessed before initialization. That's new. Um, what? Oh, does that wait? Does that mean you have to? Oh, sh uh, that's why. Um, that's new. So that's definitely a PHP eight thing. Never had that happen before. So we got zero classes, which is expected when we have that file. Let's switch back to the other one. And we have our class. So things are working as expected. Um, so the next step would be to move this into another, I feel like an entry point so we could start, um, maybe not. So the next part would be, Let's see, I want to start trying to organize this. So we're going to create an array of visitors, which we have here. Um, and we'll do for each visitors as visitor. I don't know if we'll have multiple. Actually, we will end up having multiple. Um, so we'll go there and then classes the only problem is now we only have certain files um so the next step would be to figure out um how we can start grabbing multiple files at once so that's where i'll look in to look into some more um, X debug assertion should be disabled. This will be for later on. Um, so we walked tree, multiple visitors. So the, one of the ideas, actually, I wonder if we need to have ones that different. We're collecting the classes right here. And I wonder if we need to have ones that check like, okay, um, let's do another visitor of, um, I'm trying to think of what it would be. So let's do a, So the one thing I'm thinking of is we need to have final class or no, we'll, we'll come up with the rules later on. Next thing, what I want to figure is like how we can have multiple files processed at once. So let's see simple node finding. So let's go here. Well, node visitor is flexible. It can be overly cumbersome for minor tasks. Yep. 
Um, node finder, which can find AST nodes that either satisfy a certain callback or which are instances of a certain node type. So if we had a handful of statements, then we could, we could get all the classes and we could find ones that extend um, our first instance. So that might be useful. We'll leave that open name resolution. So since the introduction namespace is name resolver can be applied to resolve names to their fully qualified form to the degree that is possible. Context. So I don't know if this would be useful at all either. So the name resolver is a visitor and it resolves all the names. Names will be replaced by fully qualified names, which are instances of fully qualified. Hmm. Because what we actually need to do is almost like filter out. So that's not going to help either right now. Um, builder, this is if you want to just build classes and convert it to PHP code. Um, so let's look at the PHP stand code. Um, PHP stand has a way of auto loading and they also have their own node visitors. Which here, statement order depth, order depth. Um, they have their own nodes. So let's see, and they have their own parsers. Um, they have a broker, which helps find classes, I believe. So reflection provider, get instance register, get class reflection provider. It finds the classes. Um, resolve function has constant resolve constant name get method return type so the hard part would be finding any class that extends this one without loading all of the files um, Broker aware extension, class member aware access answerer is in class. Um, parameters acceptor. This so annotations, constant dummy, generic, mix and native PHP. Runtime, no. How does it do the analyzer? So the analyzation, analyzation. Um, Let's look at auto loading or files. So what does it do for paths? So analyze file for each files, collector, collect errors, files, files. Where does it get the files from? Scope context, there's so much stuff in here command I think it's in the analyze command um, paths so it will go through all of the paths so if it's not array <sighs> command helper begin so much stuff um, generate baseline analyze files where does it define files So inception result, get files. Command helper begin. This is just lovely. Um, so this get files callback. That's not what I want to find. File, file find a result just returns the files. That's cool. Um, all right, so now I need to look into here. So we've got the paths array. And so we have paths, current rec, normalized path, if count paths is equal to zero. Path string, paths, wait, array, normalized paths. So the paths are what it ends up looking in. 
um, project config finder, generated config, tact, um, if comp pass, memory limit file is there, signal output error schema, processor, Autoload files, that's what calls the autoload files, the directories, autoload directories. So these are where it tries to find files to be autoloaded that get processed. Sub files exclude pass. Files callback. File finder, okay. Where file finder gets servers, file finder analyze. Jeez. Um, Let's find the service container definition in conf, which would be in config. File finder, PHP stand file, file finder. Golly. Um, let's go find that because I would like to borrow something if I can. So PHP stand file, file finder. Um, so pass for each pass if not file exists, if is file otherwise new finder. And is this this you using Symphony Finder? Crap, it is. All right, so let's rebuild our own version of this. Um, we'll do a composer require Symphony Finder core dev. Oh crap, um, core dev requires Symphony Finder for one. So we're going to be in that um, or we'll be in that problem due to so Drupal res requires a certain amount of versions and we have to try to match that otherwise it'll conflict. Um, so we we'll use Symphony Finder 4 and let's just recreate this file finder. So let's do, um, we'll make our own directory called file. And we'll do, um, wait, file finder. So the idea is that I want to turn off style and settings for this. Um, I want to be able to find all of the files inside of Drupal core lib and process them, which will probably be, what did I make my namespace? How, there we go. Um, so final class file finder, which is the file. So they do file, da, 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 they just do find files. So we'll make that too. So public function find files, which we need an array of files or paths. And they return a result. So a lot of times I do like that too, where you have um, value objects for your results. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. So let's do file finder result.php, actually class file finder result, just to streamline it. And I may as well, oh, I don't wanna, well, I can just copy this one. Well, no, I don't need to just copy it. So we'll do um, private array files. Um, we have the constructor just an array of files. And let's do implement getters and we return the files. I don't know if you guys can hear, but I swear my kids decide to always play in the hallway in my basement whenever I'm doing a live stream. Their playroom is to that side and they come through the wall a little bit, but like as soon as I am on a video call or trying to do something, they just kick it up to 
1000. Um, so let's create a so private um, array of extensions equals PHP. Um, we have the theme file. Well, no, actually, it should just be .php because we're not having any class classes. So shooting them up. No, just, I don't know. They need to go outside. It's been kind of cold here. Um, all right, so file extensions. I don't want that to be in the constructor because we know that it's just PHP files for this case. But I moved it up here just in just in case we want to use it. Um, so let's do find files, which returns a file finder result. And so only files is false if they have. What does this do? I should. We should go to the beer garden. It's Friday. Actually, Captain Mike's galley is doing fish fry somewhere. I think I might need to go do that tonight. Um, so we'll do files equals an array. We'll do for each paths as path. This should be an array of strings. So if not file exists, so new we'll make scoped um we'll go make scoped exceptions later on. Path does not exist. Else if is file path append it to there so we do the normal they do normalized path which is a good idea to handle it across um windows if you're doing windows or mac this way it has the same directory path but we're just skip that for now we're not to that point right now we're just doing proof of concept so now we have our else, where now we want to find all the files. Um, return new file finder result files. I think I might have to step outside because my older one is being a jerk to the younger one. each oh my goodness um i'm just gonna copy this so retyping everything to try and make this a little bit faster um so extensions and let's get the file names why is only files false then here i don't know um so we'll let's test that out so now I'm, I am actually, I'm going to do composer require um, dash dev. I'm going to get PHP unit. So that way, okay, so it's already added. So I can start writing some tests. Um, and let's do auto load dev. So you can do auto load dev. So that way when you're working on your project, this auto loader is only considered like for your root auto loader. Whenever it's added somewhere else, it's not considered as to be an auto load location so do duple static fun tests and in this case i'll make the directory do test tests make it plural and create the directory this should now recognize this and let's create a new let's create a test so um actually why is this not being recognized path test is not found Rename it. Um, under bin PHP unit, generate configuration, vendor auto load, directories test, source, and the cache. Make sure PHP unit cache is added to version control. So let's do git ignore. Type git ignore. 
seriously, Git Ignore is like the hardest thing to type because there's like the ITI. Um, all right, so we're gonna get some tests because now we're getting to a point where this is more than just a single file. Um, I wanna actually have some test coverage for myself. So let's do new test, PHP test, PHP unit, um, test the class. Let's just go straight up with the file finder, file finder result. So it creates our test for us here. Um, let's do public function test. What do we have? This one's really stupid, simple, get files. Get files. So SUT is subject under test. Gabe, I took that from you. So if we do this, we should just do be able to do this, assert equals. Really, really complex stuff here. But um, you know, so I hit run. Amazing, it worked. And one cool thing with PHP Storm is if we go here, so it shows that it's a class, it navigates to the test class. So when you have something matching, it can actually bring you to the test for that class. So let's go to PHP test, unit test. Let's make one for file finder. And let's actually test our file finder now that we've written it um, instead of just running it blindly. So let's go public function test find files actually i think when we do test method no setup method i want to show off a feature that i forgot to um, add so if i go to file and i do php test class php unit and i do file finder so if i select file finder Oh, here's why, because it wasn't expanded. So it actually shows all the um, the methods. So you, I'm gonna click that I wanna test find files. If I click okay, it generated the test method for me. Um, so if you are doing a lot of boilerplate code, PHP Storm is worth that, what is it? It's like a hundred bucks a year. I don't know, I get the entire um, JetBrains toolbox for, since I've been paying for, I've been paying for PHP Storm for at least, eight maybe seven years um so like the entire toolbox get access to all of the ides cost me like 180 bucks a year because they slowly decrease the price the longer you have it so it's worth it i mean goland for golang um, i use idea intellij idea for um rust and a few other things webstorm for my javascript and of course well android studio is free um, and data grip is the best database tool I've ever used. JetBrains does not sponsor me. I just really enjoy their tools. Um, so we'll go ahead and we're going to make a path equals, um, let's do directory is we're going to make it be our own source directory. So source file, we're going to analyze the file path, um, what we can do actually is let's do a data provider, data paths. We're gonna create the data provider, um, single file. So we're gonna analyze um, file finder and we should assert that the file returned is there. So let's make some sense of this data provider if you haven't done this before. So string is um, actually, yeah, string is path and an array of expected paths or just expected. So let's do a subject under test is new file finder. And we'll do sut find files in the path. And then we do a this assert equals expected subject under test. Oh, never mind. Result there find files is an array we'll just pass in an array um and we'll do result get files so we're just assert so if we run this it will run each of these as its own test case 
which allows us to cover all the different ways it works. So we'll do single file, um, directory, and we'll copy this here. So if I paste it to just file, this should fail because we're going to have one extra file available, which we do. So we can see um, file finder result. So if I run this again, great. We have that there. So let's bump this into our test file now. So before we were doing the code, so let's do, um, so let's make the path be directory, um, vendor, Drupal, core, lib, Drupal, Oh, now it's even core again. Um, route process. What's in here? Maybe this won't be a big folder. It's not cool. There's only a few files in there. That's a good sample to start with. So let's do a file finder equals new new file finder. We do file finder find files and path. which now that I'm realizing this, it doesn't make sense to make an array of paths. I know that's what's handed in here um, because PHP stand allows providing a series of paths, which we'll do actually. Why don't we, we'll just keep it that way. Um, so found files or do result equals this. So we do for each result, get files as path. Um, let's see, traversing should be atomic. And when I say that, it shouldn't matter how many times it visits the same item. So let's move this up here. And we'll create a traverser here. So we're moving this all up outside the stack. Um, so for each file, we'll do code equals get the path. We'll parse the code. We'll traverse it. And in the end, their export classes. We should get some kind of result. So let's just run the file. Um, that gave us actually that, so that worked. Let's go find that um, node visitor abstract. Let's find out where is that node name resolver. Node visitor name resolver. Here we go. So we'll, we'll pass in this no name resolver as well. Although I guess that just returns. Um, let's see. This resolve class name, this resolve. Oh, so we can just pass the name context. One second, I want to see. So this resolves the name, implements, resolve groups. This add namespace name. Oh, um, sorry, brain is slow. So what we could do is actually have a um, new name resolver traverser so what we should be able to do is do new node traverser we can paste that here name add visitor new name 
resolver. Since we're just passing, now we have an array of classes, which are all statements. We can traverse them. Um, the classes. So let's do name revolve traverser traverse classes. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put back on the debugger and step through. So yeah, so classes, we have an array. Guess what? Both of the classes in that directory pass the sniff test. Actually, I don't know if we should worry about the interface being matched, um, but I wonder if the candidate of has interface, I don't know, that's up for discussion, but it worked is the main thing. Um, so if we traverse through, this returns the manipulated nodes. So nodes, we traverse array. I thought it manipulated them in place. So let's rename, let's have this equal here. Debug. I thought that's namespace name. Is that what it does? No. I'm going to go back to the repo and name resolution. So let's see, new name resolver, add visitor, reverse. I have a namespace name property added, which, okay. That's what I expected. Names will be replaced by fully qualified. There, so name resolver, let's do following default values. The name, the actual name lives in here at alias get namespace get resolve name. I'm just somewhat confused because I expected it to simplify the class names. We have name as identifier, extends, so why doesn't it have the namespace in it? I wonder if it's because it's not the full node. Um, Namespace is null. So that's probably why. Let's go through the traversal. Enter node. So we're in a name resolver. So if node. Okay. So because it doesn't work on partial. It needs to go through the entire, like the root statement. So we would have to run that first. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's try that out first. So we could go into our visitors. We'll add this here. So first it'll go through here and that will cause all the names to be updated and it should be done in place. So let's do another debug. Um, classes, step over. So namespace name, there we go. So we should have, the namespace name is right here with all the parts. Um, if we wanted to try something else here, let's do array and array map, static function we're going to be receiving name objects and to return name does this have a two string option operation construct get name parts get first get last is qualified is fully qualified is relative to string let's do So, 
argument one, statement class given. Oh, shoot, that's right. It should be um, this class. We have a class. So the the map the array map function takes an array and basically lets you replace the values in it. Um, so in here we have the class. So we'll do um, we're going to write an assert. So this allows us to just know like hey, it may not seem this way, but it actually exists. So assert class reserve namespace name instance of name. Oh, sweet. So that's, that's actually in here. Um, it's documented. So we're going to return class namespace name to string. To code string. Why is it fully qualified? Oh, because it goes through that way. So you press play. That didn't go. Um, so the pretty names, now we have the full names. So going back to the drupal.org issue, how Gabe wants to find the collection of names. We could run this script and say, oh, well, here's the fully qualified names that match candidates for being marked final because they don't have, they don't extend anything. They're not abstract. They're not anonymous. They're not final already. Um, we could also say in here that uh, we, if it implements an interface, we'll allow it to be extended um, because people might be extending it that way. So we are able to start going through this part. Um, let's, for kicks, let's just run it on all of Drupal core. That's probably a mistake. Um, Let's see what happens. So if I go in here, path, find files. It's going to go through a lot of things. Um, let's just see how long that even takes. Oh, that wasn't too bad. So there's 1500 files. So we step through and um, again, this is the part that takes the longest because it's going to traverse 1500 times, which I could sit here and just do that. So let's just hit play here. Um, let's let it run and see what happens. Somehow, so PHP stand has a way that it chunks this up into more um, reasonable bits to handle memory um, allocation. Luckily, I have my memory set to negative one, so it'll go through like it just did. So classes, there are 434 classes that are candidates. Um, so we do the ver export, and all of these could be candidates for, um, you know, what do you want to call it? For um, for being marked final or private. So what we could do is take these. So we could, so what we could do is we could take this list as like, Hey, here's all the things that we should be marked final or internal and now run against every contrib. So, okay. I've got an idea. I've got an idea here. Um, let's do a, um, oh, okay. Um, idea, idea, idea. Sorry. My brain is working faster than I can think or my brain is f working faster than I can talk. So let's call this gather classes. So we've got gather classes. Um, and we'll do 
a file, put contents, let's do, um, let's make a new folder called resources, and we'll do file put contents, the file name, resources, um, candidates.json, and we'll do a JSON and code of the pretty names. So let's run that. So we can create a static cache of these, well, static cache, a, a dump of these class names. And we'll start working on another idea. So let's go ahead and do composer require. What is a behemoth of a module that probably does things incorrectly and loads things it shouldn't. Drupal Commerce. Oh, because I don't have um, that endpoint. What do we, what is it? What is it? What is it? I could find it in here. Um, Drupal core. I know, side note, I want to totally make it so we can ditch extension discovery the old school way and have it when things are installed, we have like PHP stands an extension installer so we can just install modules to the vendor, vendor directory. Um, I have ideas on how we could do that, but like everything else, I have ideas, but no time. Um, Composer JSON, do we have it in here? Nope, it is in... Copy it from somewhere. Here we go. I need to add our custom repository. I need minions. I'm working on training minions, but I need to clone myself. Oh, galleys at pets? All right. Food's done at five. Well, I guess I know where I should head after um, this. I think Amanda's making cookies right now, but I think cookies could wait to get. So, oh man! But if they're at, if the galley's at the Pet Spear Garden, they're gonna be sold out instantly. Um, so Pet Spear Garden, Pet's Park in Kenosha is they've got like it's the Pike River and there's like petrifying springs. That's why it's called Pet's Park, and they built a beer garden, which is like a public-private operation. Um, we know people who also built a food truck that serves pizza out of a brick oven pizza, a brick oven and pasta. I've shared it on Twitter a few times if you've seen it, but the, the pizza truck sold out at least 95 pizzas in an hour and a half. So I really, I don't think I'll be able to get any food from the galley at pets on a Friday for fish fry in the Midwest. But all right, if we're going to go, I'll send you a message. If we go, if we try, um, I don't think we'll have any chance to be able to grab it. Um, does not meet your minimum stability. Oh wait, do dev, will that let me get it in with minimum stability? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Um, minimum stability would be RC. You know, so Gabe, I think this ties into your recent blog post about stable releases, how we should just have stable releases for things. So maybe we need to ping um, myself to take a stable release. Although I've never been that involved with inline entity form to do so. Um, but let's face it, if commerce is at release 2.25, I think inline entity form is pretty stable. So this installed all of those um, custom modules in here. Yes, you could do um, at dev actually in a thing that I need to open off screen because I never get up to it correctly. So at dev, I have a GitHub action that allows you to test your um, Drupal module or in this case, PHP stand Drupal against a Drupal site. So this action will set up a site and add your repository, your current repository as a composer dependency. And it does so using, oh, it does not. I thought it did. 
but I use the um, at dev in PHP sand Drupal to add ourselves for the um, for the end-to-end -end integration, I believe. Yep. So what I do is I actually do an asterisk at dev. I'm pretty sure the asterisk is redundant, but I use this to add the local repository. Um, actually, I think so. My so my setup doesn't automatically add. Whoa, this isn't what I thought where I thought I was. Oh, set up Drupal. It adds the current workspace for you so you can add it as a dependency. So we use at dev so that way it requires the local dependency. That's how you can do testing. Um, figured part of that out from my work with Webform CRM and CVCRM entity. Um, total, total off topic now, but we have this set up in here so that way we can test we can set up and in test CVCRM entity inside of the Drupal site, same with web form CVCRM. So apparently my passion is to just go down the rabbit hole with composer and PHP stand in testing. Um, so we've got this code added. Let's okay. So in the next step we, we have a list of candidate files or candidate classes. Um, I'm gonna update this to do pardon for errors and JSON pretty print. All right, so we'll do that. Now the next step is to analyze against candidates. So let's copy this um, and then acquire. So candidates equal uh, JSON decode file git contents resources candidates. So we're going to load that file and we want to. Path equals vendor Drupal commerce. Um, so let's copy this. So go here. All right. Um, So what do I want to do here? We want to parse. We still want to parse all of these. Um, so let's do traverser, add visitor, new class, extends. There we'll do um, on enter node. And again, we want to stop on. So we want to check here. So the idea is we want to go through all the classes in the commerce module set. Um, and find things that extends, wait, yeah. So if extends is equal to null, we wanna skip it um, to do, see if we extend a candidate. So since we're in anonymous class, let's do, let's pass the candidates array. Let's do private candidates and then a constructor which receives the candidates and this you know i used to hate ruby for it's like constructors with the crazy like oh just you're in a method we'll do two at signs and you get think it added as a magical property now i'm kind of digging it 
um, with all the boilerplate. So what we want to do um, is extends. We want to see if the the extension matches the um, one of the private candidates. So let's do stop equals null. Drop a breakpoint. We got the traverser. Um, um, I don't know how we'll flag it all, but we'll go through gather classes. So we traverse traverser. All right, so that's all we need to do. Let's run. Oh, now it wants to show run. Crap. Let's debug. Um, so files. We've got 990 files inside the commerce module. Just press play. So stop node extends form base. So let's get um, extends equals node extends. What happens when I do to string? Oh, do test equals here. Test is form base. Well, how do we do the um, Well, actually, before I get into there, why don't I just rerun the name resolver to make this easier because we don't need to do anything too absurd. Add visitor, then with resolver or name resolver. So if we get the name resolver, test, bam. All right, so there's the fully qualified class name. So if well, um, so if we want to do iterate, like, like, is array search faster than, um, in array? I always wondered. Um, search isn't ready for a given value and returns the first corresponding key if successful. So it returns int string or false, which we would do, you know, assert, cast it to a Boolean. Um, so if we refresh, assert false. So we're going to go ahead and do assert equal to true and see if anything comes up. Probably not. Um, but Gabe, I think we have the, the code. I think this could do it is we could, you need to make another like collector um, that would collect anything that passes this assertion. Oh, here we go. So the default HTML route provider, which I think we can't make final, but boom, we've already found a class that should not be marked final because everything uses it. Um, if we were to default HTML route provider, yeah, it doesn't, it's not an abstract class. It's like a concrete class that implements interfaces and provides a lot of good defaults. But again, this is one that if we broke the constructor, like for commerce or media. So like right here, this is where things can get messy. So if the constructor was modified for the base class, the media route provider would instantly break. Um, what class extends this? Currency route provider. Why isn't this showing up as so like this wouldn't break because it doesn't expect, oh, because I clicked on anything that overrode the um, create instance. So that's where things could break if we marked it, if we, that's where it would be beneficial if you mark these things final. The only problem is it would make 
adding new routes a complete pain in the butt. And it's like, well, do we just make all these traits? Who knows? We just don't make this one final. Um, so I'm going to click stop. Let's real quick add a, oh, we can do another class collector because this doesn't care what we're collecting. Um, so collector, e collector equals new class collector. Um, let's make our anonymous class receive the collector. Private class collector. Um, just add this in quick. And I usually I do this for two hours, so we're coming up on the seven minute mark. I'll be pretty excited if this mostly quote unquote works. So we'll do if assert this collector add class is node. Um, let's so we run this. Let's go back to our gather classes. We'll copy this part at the end. Um, let's do, let just say commerce. We'll put it here, the commerce. So let's run it and see what comes up at the end. Um, yeah, so Gabe, I think we did it. So these, oh, this found, um, so these, I have an idea. What we need to do, oh. Well, these classes would conflict. Um, I guess what we need to do is node. Let's change this up a bit. Um, Cert. So yeah, actually doing array search makes sense because assert is false. Let's do assert. Assert. Oh my goodness. Caps lock off. So let's wait for assert to not equal to false. It's false if it doesn't exist. So let's hit play. And wait a second. Because it should return the key value eventually sometime there we go so cert it gives us the key value so this collector we actually want to do um, this candidates assert so that way we'll take the the class name it extends let's hit stop turn that off let's um, rerun it so now we'll be able to go through the commerce module and we'll know all of the things that it, um, that it conflicts with. Oh, argument one must be type of class string given. Um, that's a fair enough error because we're not returning the, um, So it's expecting a class statement. What if we could just rebuild it or change this to be um, new array object. Construct a new array object, allows objects to work as arrays. Sure, we'll do this. Let's ditch the collector for the array object. Make this faster. This conflicts, conflicts. Array object, conflicts. 
Yeah, so I don't know how to do that. How to do the um promotion. Because you're right, that's really what I would rather do. But I have no idea how to do it. Um, so we'll do the append. I was going to look it up. I've only just started recently using um, PHP 8 because of Rector needing to use PHP 8 for development. So I haven't really looked into a lot of the feature functionality. Given the fact that with Drupal, we've always been in like the dark ages when it comes to PHP functionality. Um, so whoop, analyze against candidates. We can delete the collector conflicts. Um, Array copy. Sure, we'll just do this. So we should be able to just dump it that way. Let's press play and see what happens. So yeah, let's look at that. PHP 8 constructor promotion. Let's go to Stitcher IO, which always gets me confused because Stitcher is the podcast thing I use. So let's see. I that yeah, so instead of doing this, you could do this. I oh that's what I did wrong. I see. Um as I tried doing it, so I did this. I honestly just went and did this here, but we need to do private array. And, aha, look at me, I'm fancy now. Um, there we go. Thank you for bringing it up and I'm glad I finally looked into it. So that would work. Um, sweet, take that Ruby, we can have cool things too. Um, so if we looked at commerce, we see here's the classes that conflict. Um, since we can do multiple paths, let's go ahead and try a handful of things, um, commerce directory. So we've got address, entity module, inline entity form, profile state machine and token so this would take care of you know if we can analyze this how many sites use drupal commerce right now the reason i'm picking commerce is i'm one of the maintainers and i spent the past six years building um commerce 2.x with boyan so let's look at status there's 54,000 sites total 17,000, almost 18,000 sites using 2.x which is for drupal 8 so any changes we make could break about 17,000 sites. And any site with Drupal Commerce is definitely using custom code. So I feel like testing against the Commerce code base is more relevant than like paragraphs module because people aren't extending and customizing the paragraphs module as much or probably customizing their sites a lot. So here we can see that we definitely should not mark anything part of the entity system as final because that will have some severe um, consequences. And the utility token module, or not module, but the utility token class would be, um, would cause some problems because the token module, you know, makes that thing, that class actually work properly. So, but this looks exactly like something that should be marked final and everything inside of it private. So it'd be one of, is there a way we could fix this? Or maybe, you know, this would have prevented a contrib module from having to be written and we could have um, made it be fixed in core. Who knows what, or it just needs to actually be, oh, this isn't part of a service. Oh no, I don't have the Symphony plugin configured. That's why I don't see any services. Never mind. Um, cool. So I think 
we've got it. Maybe. Um, there's a handful of candidates here. I don't know the best way to preserve this. Um, actually, yeah, I do. Um, what should we call this? The Drupal, Drupal finalizer. I think that's what somebody said in the chat. We can just uh, final a fire. I like final a fire. Um, Drupal final a fire. So we've got that there. Um, halfway have test. Let's do a quick get init. Get status. Oh, let's ignore the vendor directory. We'll keep the dot lock file. And the idea folder, which has all the IDE information in it. Let's do git add la, git commit. The initial final fire. I wonder if from the GitHub command line you can create a new repo. So GitHub repo create auth. Yeah. Create a new repository, Drupal static fun. We're gonna call it the Drupal finalifier for the final firing of Drupal. Um, it'll be public. Oh, internal, I wonder what that means. Um, this will add an origin, yes. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that through the command line. Um, so hopefully somebody else learns something new and interesting with that. Oh, I got to push. I will definitely have a beer for you. I will have one in your honor, Gabe. Um, so here's the link just so that way we have some of it. If you're curious to look at it. Um, now I'll, I'll post it to Twitter later on to our quotes or I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see. Where's our thread from before. This is a cool thing I want to cover next time that I completely forgot that I did. Um, The out, the outcome, the final, the fire found about 400 candidates that could be marked final or internal and a scanner to see what contrib may extend them. Cool. Um, so there's that. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I know one thing I want to do is cover this. So I forgot, apparently in September, I um, was able to use a database connection and unit test by using the memory SQLite option. And I did something. I have no idea what I did. I don't remember this, but I wrote it as a kernel test and it took 30 milliseconds. But when I did it as a unit test with this approach, it took 18 milliseconds. Yeah, we're talking milliseconds. What's 12 milliseconds though is about halfway. And when you have about a hundred tests, you know, one, what's 12 MS times 100 seconds, whatever that is, that's 1.2 seconds. Things add up, especially when you're being billed per second on your CI service. So that's one thing that I want to um, try out on another stream. So, yep, so thanks for tuning in. I am going to go see about getting a beer at the beer garden now and some fish fry. So have a good weekend, everybody.